This is code.org. Let's see what we're working on. Touching the water. Oh, if you don't have a game yet, you need to go try out the other parts of this lesson. All right. Last part of the game that you'll need to write is code to reset the sprites when they touch the water. Right. So what they're saying is right now, if I push the enemies off, right, they still live. So in the example, they had to be reset. So uh, luckily, you should have already written functions that reset each sprite. Yep, we did that. So you'll just need a good way to know when the sprite leaves the bridge. Start by writing the code for a single enemy, then copy and paste and make small changes to create code for your second enemy. For this level, you'll be writing code inside the enemies touch water function. So let's go find that. And keep in mind, here's our draw loop. Our draw loop is what runs 30 times a second. Enemies touch water is here. So this is a function call. First, it's going to draw the game background and the computer will say, what's that? Boom, and runs this code. Once it's done running that, it goes beneath and that's when it does enemies touch water. So let's look for that. Enemies touch. Oh, is that enemies touch cake was next? Oh, enemies touch cake was next, but enemies touch water is there. All right. So we have this empty function. Use an if statement to check whether enemy one is off the top of the bridge by checking whether its y value is below 150, 140 within your if statement. So let me take a look at what they're saying. Watch these numbers down here. Look at my mouse. So my mouse right now, the y value is 144. If I go here, 147. If I go here, 139. So we're checking if the enemy's Y value is less than 140. Because if the enemy's Y value, look here again, is 67, well, look, the enemy's way off the bridge. So I'm asking the computer a conditional question, an if question, and saying, hey, is the enemy off? Is the enemy above or is the enemy's Y value less than 140? If that's the case, they're above the bridge. So we need a conditional to check. And to do that, I'm headed to control and I'm going to grab my if and drop it in. So a conditional statement, an if statement. And what am I checking? If the enemies, so I want to know the location of the enemy's x value. And we want to know if it is below. Another way to say below, less than. So I'm headed to math and I'm going to grab a less than sign. So if the enemy is less than 140. What part? Well, the y value of it. So let me go grab my enemy.y. Here we are. Boom. And I'm going to say enemy1.y is less than 140. What do we want to have happen? Well, if they're less than 140, the player must have pushed them off the bridge. And we need them to reset over here, right? So if they're less than 140, the player pushed them off the bridge. How do we reset our enemy? Hmm. Well, we can go look. We do it in a few places, right? What happens when the enemy cut, touches the cake? Oh, look, we set the enemy, right? That's the functions we created down here. That makes enemy one's X value equal to zero and it randomizes their Y on the bridge. Same with set enemy two, zero randomizes Y. So awesome. Now we can use our function. We can call that function instead of having to rewrite all of those, uh, both of these lines. So inside of if enemy one dot y is less than 140, I'm going to grab my function and say set enemy one. Boom. And now hopefully if we do push enemy one off the bridge, it reappears on the other side. All right. Now I need to do add one to the score. Okay. So that's the counter pattern. And we've done this before. I'm going to grab x equals blank and i'm going to say score which is our score variable equals score plus one and what that is doing is saying hey computer score has a new value its new value is the old value plus one all right now what do we do use an if statement to check whether enemy one is off the bottom of the bridge by checking whether y is above 260. so let's double check this look down here Okay, so my mouse is at 250. Oh, now it's at 260. So what if it's at 310? Oh, yeah, it's definitely off. What if it's at 273? Definitely off. Okay, so that's how we're going to check if it's off the bridge. So I'm headed to control. I'm going to grab an if statement, and I'm going to do the same thing here, right? If, except this time, I want to know if it's above. So I would grab a, for above, you're going to want to grab a greater than. So if, Enemy one's y value, drop. If enemy one's y value is greater than 260, well, then we know it's off the bridge. And what do we want to do if it's off the bridge? Same deal. We want to set it. 
I want to point out too. Well, let me write this. Set enemy one, and then what are we going to do? Same idea. If they push off the bottom, we would still add to the score. So score equals score plus one. Now, look how many times I've used set enemy. Once, twice. I use it up here when they touch the cake three times, and I use it when the program first runs four times to position our enemy at zero X and a random Y. So four times I use it. Four times two is eight. So we cut the amount of code we're writing in half by using a function here. That's the point of functions. That's the usability of them. Okay, now add one to score. We got that. So if test your program, once it's working, copy and paste the code below for enemy two. All right, let's just double check everything here. Oh, that's enemy one. Let me push them. Oh, that's looking good. Enemy two doesn't work yet because we haven't coded. Okay. So I think we put it all in the same function. So I'm going to click and drag my box here. Once I do, I'm going to hit command or control C on a PC, command C on a Mac. Notice this little black bar. I'm going to move it around. Boom. And paste. Okay. So I did control V or command V on a Mac. And now I just want to switch these up to enemy two, enemy two, enemy two. Be nice if we could use parameters, enemy two, and enemy two. So now think about this. Now we're using enemy two once, twice. Uh, that's the actual function. Three times, four times as well. So in total, we have saved ourselves eight lines of code. And as functions get increasingly complex, it becomes really handy. Also, if you didn't know what's going on and you just look at this program, if enemy is less than 140, set enemy one. Okay, so they must reset the enemy somewhere. Now, again, it's not entirely clear, but it's better than just seeing enemy.x, right? It kind of helps you understand what is going on with your program. I'm going to hit run and score a billion points. Uh, 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 die, 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 die. I'm awesome. Nope. Oh, I'm having too much fun. Okay, let's double check here. All right, test. Oh, that's going to bug me. Once it's working, copy and paste. Yep. You'll need to change the name of the sprite. Yes, make sure you do that. If something's going wrong, guys, you really need it to be two, enemy two, so on and so forth. And you want score in each of these ifs because it's only true once, right? So this is only going to be true if they're less than 140. So I need to set the score as well because if I don't have a score here, it won't happen. Just because it's down here, they're only going to have one of these be the case. It can't be in both places at the same time. We have a pretty awesome game. Onward.